want to do some examples of limits of quotients to really clarify something that people often have trouble with. Let me just to give a really quick overview of a really important distinction and then do some quick examples. Limit of a quotient. The limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x. There isn't a formula for this, folks. There's a rule, and it has, a three, it has three parts to it. It's a three-part test. Case one is if the limit of the bottom, the bottom is not equal to zero. That, you breathe a sigh of relief, then, you, then and only then can you use the limit laws. And most of the time in our examples, the quotient was the only weird thing. These guys are continuous, often they're polynomials. In other words, you have the direct substitution property, you just plug in. Okay. Now, suppose the bottom is zero. Okay. And the top is not. bottom is going towards zero and the top is not going towards zero. Okay. Then you're getting a number that's not getting small over a number that's getting very, very small. If we want to be use vague language, which I encourage for understanding, but it's important to know its limitations, it's not a proof and definitely not something AP likes. The medium number over small number, like 5 over 0.0001. That's going to get very, very big. But big in magnitude, in size, that doesn't necessarily mean positive. It might actually be 5 over minus 0.0001. OK, that could be a very, very large negative number. In other words, it goes to plus or minus infinity. I'd say on the AP, you don't want to say any of this, well, yeah, except for this. You want to show that you know it's this case. And on a test for me, it's probably a good idea too. I don't mind seeing this stuff. That's great. But if I see that you know this theorem, this test, that's even better. If the bottom goes to zero and the top does not, it's going to go to plus or minus infinity. And then there's a certain amount of more work to be done. Then you have to test the signs, whether it's plus or minus infinity. Or maybe both or neither, and then uh, you have to be more careful. Okay? Or it's not going to be nice to write down. But I want to see that this test has been applied. So that's one case. That's that means the second case. And I'm already out of room. OK. Well, let's go up to here. Case three is where the top and the bottom both go to 0. Now, I don't want you to just say, oh, that's 0 over 0, so it obviously doesn't exist. The, the, the mistake there is that you're plugging in. Sure, if you plugged in x equals a, yeah, you're probably going to get 0 over 0. But that's not exactly what we never do. What's more accurate, at least on a sort of vague level, is that you're going to get a small number over another small number. But that could be many different things. It could be. 0.1 over 0.0001. I'll leave you to figure out that's actually a very large number. Or it could be 0.001 over 0.001. That's actually a very small number. Or it could be 0.002 over 0.001. That's actually a medium sized number. These are the kinds of numbers you might get. Again, this is not a careful way to think, it's a great way to understand and get the idea. It's not a careful way to think about it. And these are numerical examples that are definitely not the whole story. It's great for the, your understanding. It's not the final answer. Because I'm not actually saying you just plug in 0.1 and you're done. And you just calculate the number and you're done. That's not how we do limits. It does say 
that we definitely need to do more work here. Because just saying it's small over small doesn't really give us much of a hint as to what's going on. Okay? So what happens in this case is you need to do more work. You need to do algebra before you do the calculus. Almost always, it's that you need to do some, some simplification of the algebraic expression of the quotient before you actually try to take the limit. Okay, so that's the three-part test. This is the part that people typically miss and that was on a couple of the test problems. Um, that if the bottom's going to zero and the top is not, it's going to be plus or minus infinity, and you, and you still have more work to do there, there to, to figure out the sign. Okay, so let me show you some examples of this. It'll probably take more than just the one 15 minute uh, video, but we'll see how much time we have in a minute. Okay, so let's start with one that's really, just to cover all our bases, this is going to be one that's really straightforward. Well, the thing you might forget to do, because you're going to assume it's a complicated case, is let's just plug in. 4 minus 1, that's not going to 0. 16 plus 6, 22 minus 20, that's not going to 0 either. So, neither of them is going to 0. The top and the bottom are polynomials, so independently, separately, I can just plug in. So I'm done. This was 3, and that was uh, 2, right? I just forgot what I got. Yeah, three halves. Okay. And we're done. Nothing interesting happened there because the bottom was not going to zero. Okay. Second example. Limit as x goes to, to, let's go to two now of the same expression. Yeah, I don't really need friends. Okay. Now, uh, 4 plus 6 is 10, minus 10 is 0. Now the bottom's going to 0, but the top is not. This is case 2 from the three-part test. And so I need to, to do more work. But I really just need to figure out, I know already it's plus or minus infinity. Because it's a medium-sized number over a very small number as x gets closer to 2. And this just gets closer and closer to 1. It's not doing anything. It's not getting bigger or smaller, really. And this guy's getting closer and closer to the 0 that it would have if I plugged in 2. But I can't just say it's 1 over 0 DNE. That doesn't make sense, and I can tell when you answer that that you plugged in the 2, which is not what you're supposed to do for a limit. So let's do a little more algebra. All righty. Now I can figure out better what the signs are. I want to th think of x as being a number just a little bit different from 2. And I want to think about the signs. Well, if x is close to 2, this is approximately 1. No matter what this is, this is 1.9, 2.1, whatever, this is going to be close to 1. In particular, it's going to be positive. I'll just put a big plus there. If x is close to 2, <clears throat> subtract 3 from a number that's close to 2. That's definitely going to be negative. And now here's the annoying thing. I can't tell for sure what sign that's going to be. That could be a little bit positive if, two, if x is a little bit bigger than 2, or a little bit negative if x is a little less than 2. So here, <clears throat> if it really was the full two-sided limit, I could just say does not exist. Because I can't tell you whether it's plus or infinity or minus infinity definitely. So let me change the problem. Let's suppose it's actually the limit from 2 from below. And in book problems, that's often a big hint. You're going to get a plus or minus infinity. Because they want a definite answer, and they know that if they put a 2 without the plus or minus, it's much, much, much less likely you'll get a definite plus infinity or minus infinity. So now with that modification of the problem, a number a little less than 2, subtract 2, definitely going to be minus. Okay. Now, um, a lot of folks, riffing off of the way I, I've introduced this, would put in, actually put in like 1.9 in here. That's fine mostly. I don't know if the AP would like it so much it's a little imprecise. How do you know that 1.9 isn't walking a little bit too far away from 2? It's better, really. So I don't think I, I would object to that too much. But um, as long as it's a number that's really close to 2 and on the correct side. But it's better to just think it's a number that's just absolutely tiny, tiny, tiny bit less than 2. 
And all you're trying to figure out is the sign of it. You're not trying to figure out the number. You don't really even have to put in an explicit number. But if it makes you feel more comfortable about it, as long as you use something really close to 2, I think I'm OK with that. OK, so now plus over minus times minus. So that's going to be plus, and it's going to go to plus infinity. Okay. Um, so that's the case that a lot of people were missing, where you have non-zero over zero. You have to carefully, you have to know that it's going to plus or minus infinity, and you have to look at the signs. Now, I did, did it verbally. What do I want to see for justification for this? I want to see something that says, you know, in here that justifies this and says something like non-zero over zero case plus infinity or minus infinity. Some reference to that case of the theorem would be really nice, because I was seeing a lot of people put in stuff that I couldn't tell if people really were using the right reasoning at all. Okay, So <clears throat> let's check the time. Hopefully it's not over 15 at least. Okay. Let's do one more real quick, and then we'll save the rest for a continuation. This is the case. In some ways, it's one of the subtler cases, but we focus on it enough that it's the one that people were getting pretty well. OK, first of all, do I even have to do anything interesting? Yes, because we know the bottom's going to 0. But now I've changed the top. Now it's a 0 over 0. You can put that in quotes if you want. But just don't think, oh, I'm done. The DNE can't divide by 0. Because that would be thinking that you could take the quotation marks off and thinking that I really mean it's the number 0 divided by the number 0. That would be if I plugged in 2, and I don't plug in the limit. Not unless I really know it's a direct substitution case. But what you guys have learned is that if you do a little algebra, you can cancel these guys. That's totally legal, exactly because I never actually do plug in 2 to calculate this limit up here. And now I've changed it to something where if I plug in 2, nothing weird happens. I plug in 2 here, I get minus 1. Okay. This is that 0 over 0 case, or the small over small case, where if you do some algebra, we've turned it into a, a different case. Now I want to emphasize the logic here. We use the three-part test twice. We used it once up here to determine that we could not plug in the two, and that we didn't have to worry about plus or minus infinity yet. So we did some algebra, and we've changed it into a brand new problem that's still a quotient. And then we used the three-part test again, and now bottom does not go to zero. It's case one of that three-part test, and you don't have to do anything interesting. You plug in. We'll continue.